Slayer is the final character of Guilty Gear Strive Season 3 and in this video I'm going to teach you the basics of playing the character. So in this video we're going to look at what type of character he is, his pros and his cons, his most important moves, and some simple strategies and tactics you can implement relatively quickly and then when you get a little bit better a little bit more on top of that. So for starters what type of character is Slayer? So he's not necessarily quick, this is what his dash and back dash looks like. Honestly he's kind of slow, but he moves with a lot of attack so special moves really slide him all over the place. As the power archetype suggests, he does a lot of damage. And he has lots of room for combo potential. So he has pretty good offense and mix-ups, especially once he gets started. But things really start getting crazy once he actually bites you and everything becomes a universe counter hit, which leads into huge combos. So what are his pros and cons? One, his damage is incredibly high. He has a lot of ways to like loop big damage combos and even simple combos do quite a bit of damage when you don't know what to do. His HP is on the higher end. Also, he has pretty big normals. Thanks to having a lot of advantage on different moves, he has a lot of little mix-up opportunities he can sneak in. And because of the combination of good mix-ups, advantage, and high damage, he only needs a couple of opportunities to win a game. Finally, despite being a pretty slow character, he is actually surprisingly mobile and slippery. For cons though, despite being pretty slippery, he moves in a pretty linear way. So you're always sliding at them or sliding away. His backdash also right now is kind of finicky. So actually, once he starts moving, you can just hit him. So even though he has a lot of invincibility on his backdash, it's actually pretty hard to time how to actually get the invincibility off the backdash. He does have a meter reversal, but this actually makes it really hard to use because this thing about his backdash is pretty counterintuitive if you've been playing this game at all. So next, I want to look at his most important moves. And the way I decided to do this is by breaking down a couple phases of the game. Generally, in my opinion, fighting games are broken down into four phases. Neutral, which is when two characters just kind of running on the screen. Nobody has like a big advantage most of the time. Then offense is when you're doing block strings or mix-ups to someone else. Defense is when your opponent is doing block strings and mix-ups to you. And then finally, knockdown is when somebody knocks down the other person, which is a massive advantage. And you could do things that you can't normally do to the opponent. So Slayer for neutral has a lot of pretty good buttons he can use. For starters, 5P is a pretty good anti-air, pretty big. He's always had a pretty good 5P in Guilty Gear in general. It's very easy to combo off of. But if you need a meteor option, then his 6P also does the trick. The nice thing about his 6P is that it has upper body invincibility. So you can use it as a counter poke and in some cases even on reaction to some things that people do in a neutral game. So there I'm trying my best to use 6P on reaction to him doing map punch. And this is taking advantage of the invincibility that it has against pokes that hit above the waist. Then 5k, this move is just really, really crazy. It is very, very big. Even the GOAT 5k of the game, Nago cannot mess with this. He just wins really clean. And the really nice thing is that on counter hit, you get to combo into blue wild assault, which means you can go into a really good situation. On top of that, it's jump cancelable, so you just have a lot of options. Then you have 2k. Uh, not as amazing as his 5k, but also a very good move. Pretty big, reaches really far. Most importantly, it's a big low. This is really important because his 2s is not a low. So this is his sweep. The move is special cancelable, so you can use it to kind of just get in. So even though you don't have as much advantage as you probably would in an older Guilty Gear game, the good news is you can just cancel into something that's very safe anyway. So you have a really long range low. Speaking about lows, how about another one? You have 2H. Big thing here is that it feels like this move just straight up beats lows, which is pretty typical for this move. Uh, because he kind of just hops over like this. It's quite huge as well and very easy to just do big combos off of if they do something that goes in the range, especially a low. This is pretty valuable in this game because a lot of strong characters like Nago and HC, like repeated top tier characters, uh, one of the big things about them that is good is that they have huge lows that you can't walk away from. So him having a move that stomps that beats lows or at least feels like it beats lows is also, again, very valuable. If you miss it, it kind of sucks, but it's kind of hard to miss if you have any spatial awareness because it's just a really huge move. Then you have far slash. So if they are in range of this move and they block the second hit, he is incredibly advantageous. 
uh, it's very difficult for people to actually deal with this. At this moment, this makes it the most advantageous far slash in the game, where normally it's Soul at plus two, this thing is plus four. He's not mobile, so it's like he kinda needs it, but if you're ever in range of actually doing it, they really can't like do anything about it besides backing off, really. For air to air, you have a couple options. Uh, one of your main ones is jump P, which is quite big, and then jump K, which is also quite big. On top of that, you have more typical system options like air throw. But to be honest, frankly, you should not be jumping a lot with this character. Uh, they kind of took away his like floating jumping moves. Like I believe it was jump 2K he had before. He can't really do that right now. So a lot of the stuff you're going to be doing is on the ground with him. To round off neutral, a couple of important special moves. Uh, the big ones are going to be map a hunch, both versions. So K map a hunch and punch map a hunch. So punch map a hunch. Punch, map a hunch, try saying that three times fast. Uh, there's a couple of good things about this move. The main one being is that it's minus one. So what this means is if you try to throw, you will not be able to. He can actually move first away from you, which forces the opponent to one, lab the situation on block and on a hit. And two, he has simple guessing games he could use against the opponent depending on how fast their options are. Okay, map a hunch is actually punishable, but from a further range, it's not. It's also pretty valuable too because you could do it from really far. And if you want to extend the range even more, then you gotta wait till the end of the video so I can tell you how to do it. Another pretty important special move is actually gonna be K Dandy Step. So his punch Dandy Step advances, and if you're point blank, you can go through the opponent. However, K Dandy Step actually involves him sliding back first, but this backdash actually doesn't have invincibility. So what is important about this move, it's that if you use it as a specific position, you can whiff punish things with Pile Bunker. This means that if you hit them, since it's a hard knockdown, you can set up offense right away. Then the last important move for neutral, this one does not come up a lot, but it's actually going to be Super Mappa Hunch. This is half circle back forward S. So the big thing about neutral for this is that when people do things from full screen like this, you can counter them. It also helps against annoying Holma supers for lack of a better word, if you know, you know. So supers like this, this is Asuka's supers, one of the best supers in the games. Very, 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 very annoying, basically. I don't want to say there's no counterplay, but it's very, very hard to deal with. Basically, if he does this, you have to respect him. However, if you play Slayer, you're built a little bit different. So next, we're going to talk about important buttons for Rushdown. So first, of course, we want to talk about his fastest move, his punches. There's nothing really special about this besides it's just kind of big for a 2P. A spacing where Souls 2P will not reach, Slayer's will. So it's just a big move that you can mash on. And the nice thing is that it combos into P Mappa. Next, we must revisit 5k. Again, it is huge, it is jump cancelable, and there's a lot of options on it between normals, sweep, safe cancels like Mappa, and then even baits like using K Dandy. You just have a ton of options off this move. The next button is his close slash. So his close slash does a bunch of important things. Number one, it reaches incredibly high. In fact, it takes a super jump to really actually get away from this move. Number two is that it's incredibly plus. So he joins the club with characters like Soul and Giovanna and Nagoyuki by having a plus three close slash. This might not mean that much to you besides having slightly more advantage, but it just makes people have more problems simply mashing their way out of stuff. So even using Soul's really famous 5k which is three frames as a mashing tool he's not even have a chance at mashing out here and on top of that like 5k it's dash cancelable and jump cancelable and you basically have all your moves available from this even moves that maybe don't have immediate use for you like 6k so you have a lot of ways to set up offense using this move Next is far slash, remember this? So this move is plus four and in offense, it really shines. You really just get to pretend to be soul. Similar to soul's famous, very deep, very interactive pressure structures. People also have to basically press something really fast in order to counter this, which leaves them open to dying from a different button, 2H. If they end up being scared of you, you could repeat the situation or even try to take a turn. Overall, it's a really, really good move. So 2H revisits. Uh, again, here, it's a frame trap plus counter hit tool. But then it also has pushback, so you can use it to adjust your positioning the way you want. So what I mean is like something like close slash will kind of push you here. Where 2H is pretty big, so like let's say I wanted to get further away from here. This would connect and put me back into a nice spot where I can wait and see what my opponent's going to do. Force my way back in and more. 
Then you have 2S. So this is a new move, at least for me. Maybe he has this as like EX Slayer and plus R or something. But typically his 2S is a high reaching anti-air move, kind of similar to characters like Jacko and Abba. But instead, it's a vacuuming move that moves in. So this move is incredibly punishable on block. But due to the nature of the move, you can set up pretty simple strike throw situations with this using his command grab. Then another button that's pretty important is 6H. This is basically just for catching jump outs in certain situations. Like close slash, it hits pretty high. Again, requiring a high jump to escape. And the main difference between this and close slash is that close slash, you have to be close, haha, it's in the name. Where 6H, you can use it from pretty far. Then for special moves, it's pretty much two you're going to mostly be aiming for you will be actually using mappa because like i mentioned for neutral this is minus one so there's a lot of guessing games you can play around who takes what turn what does slayer do in response things like that however the big one is going to be p dandy step so this has several follow-ups so the p follow-up is for pile bunker which you'll be mostly using for combos for a while the k follow-up does a load that leads into hard knockdown the S follow-up leads into an overhead, and the H follow-up is a extremely advantageous guard crush. So things you actually need to know. One is that the low and the overhead actually hit at the same time. I am not going to sit here and say it's visually reactable, but since it hits at the same time, no one can use any like defensive techniques like trying to block low and then switch high against this. When you're in mid screen, you can use P Dandy to go through people while making your mix-ups more visually confusing, for lack of a better word. So say the difference between this and this. If you think, okay, that's the same, then watch me try to defend just two options, same side high or cross up high. Knowing there's only two options, I still had problems defending it. So the problem ends up being establishing the move and the easiest way to do so is by using high blocks on attacks. By using moves like standing heavy into dandy step into the H follow up, you can make it so that people can't twitch reactive throw, which would beat the overhead normally and force them to pick different options like jumping. If you think they're going to do that, that's what it slates for. So the punch version of Dandy Step has a pretty simple spread of options that could be pretty hard to deal with without preparing for. And finally, the last thing is going to be the command grab. This is half circle back H. This is the move he taught Nago, or I guess every vampire teaches other people how to bite, I don't know. But basically, this transforms every move into a heavy counter hit. He gets a very nice special message for him where he says universe. And the big thing for him is that he gets to combo off stuff he doesn't normally get to combo off of. Some simple examples, his dust, the overhead follow up of Dandy, but also the low follow up of Dandy. So things he's not usually able to combo off of, he is able to. The effect is not permanent, however, it does last a long time. So next we're gonna talk about defense. There's actually not a lot to talk about here. Outside of his TP being his five frame normal, it's mostly gonna be talking about backstep and hand of doom. So he has the slowest, or I guess the, a better way of putting it is the longest total duration backdash. And his invincibility ends when he moves. So if I wait a little bit, I will hit him out of the backdash. But if I hit him when he's not moving, he'll be invincible. So in order to get invincibility straight into his backdash exclusive special move, Hand of Doom, you need to time it so that you actually backdash through them. And this move does not have invincibility and it's punchable, so it's kind of hard to use. However, with meter, you are able to cancel the Hand of Doom. How good this is and how many defensive techniques he's going to have using the RC system, we will see as time goes on. Of course, it's very early, but if you follow the game, characters like Biken, I mean, honestly, Biken is really the standout one here. Uh, she has a simple defensive option that ends up having a ton of options when you have resource. So it looks like he's going to be similar. That being said, because of the nature of his backdash being so long, and him being able to get hit out of the movement portion of it. This means that you will have to learn a lot about other characters in order to use his backdash well so that you just don't get hit randomly. So with this, let's talk about some quick combos. For starters, just button button punch Mappa. When you hit somebody with this, you are advantageous. And if you hit them crouching, you're even more advantageous. But just by an extra frame. If you use a meteor button like a kick, you can combo into K Mappa, which leads to a soft knockdown. Since his far slash is plus, he actually has the ability to do close slash, far slash, close slash, far slash, kind of like in older Guilty Gears. This is a link, but honestly, I've been just mashing it, and my main thing is that if they're crouching, it's slightly easier. When you do this, you have a couple of options. The first hit of far slash actually has a stagger, so that means you can combo into the bite, which means you have a massive advantage on your mix-ups. 
if you want some corner push, close slash goes into 6H, and because 6H force is crouching, you can go into Pile Bunker. It's a ground hit, so it's actually pretty hard to get this to splat from like mid screen. If you hit a 5K and it's counter hit, you get an extremely powerful situation where you can combo into Wild Assault. And if they don't burst right away, this is pretty much a burst safe method of getting a bite with the universe power. When you don't know what to do to get some random hits, you can roaming cancel into close last 6H pile bunker, and as long as the wall is nearby, you will automatically wall splat. Even if it's not optimal damage, you're opening yourself up to positive, so you're going to do more damage, have more defense, get meter, get burst, you're going to get all these benefits, so it's not a bad trade-off until people really structure how to do some of his higher damage and more optimal stuff more consistently. For knockdown stuff, any actual OTG leads into a safe jump. When you do get a 2k 2d, the world is kind of yours. You have a few options you can go with here. One option is Samidi Master's Hammer, which is the H follow-up of Dandy Step. This is nice because you get a ton of frame advantage to work with, so you can just do a simple mix-up pretty easily. For starters, you can go high-low here. And like I mentioned before, the overhead and low hit at the same time, so they would have to block this correctly. They can't use any tricks. If you want to set up symbol offense, you can just use the safe jump for plus frames. Or you can kick it old school by doing multiple dashes. Nice thing here too is that even if they do get through this, you are a plus four, so you can just keep on doing offense. So last, let's talk about some simple general strategies you can use with the character. If someone is staying far away and trying to set something up independently of you, simply punch them. The nice thing is that if they try to get out the way, you're moving too, so you're just switching positions. If the character tends to approach you with buttons, mix up using 5k, which is big and just kind of hard to with punish in general. P or K Mappa to interrupt them. Or you can use sweep. 2H is not a bad idea because it's huge, but he does not move, so you need to not miss if you use this. If it helps, think of this like Soul's Gunflame. Like a projectile that's kind of mid-range, but it's kind of risky to use unless you have meter to protect yourself. He has a lot of stuff that's advantageous, so if you can just get them to block close slash or far slash, or spaced map hunches, you can set up your offense easy from there. Keep in mind that even on normal hit, he does have an advantage on P Mappa. Remember that high block stun moves like 5H, 6H, and 2H can be used with Mappa to avoid throws so that you can force people to respect your offense and pick different options. Once they start jumping, use its late to keep them down and continue your offense. You can use both back step and K dandy step into pile bunker to whiff punish stuff. When you use these, you're kind of just guessing. Since he can't run, you can't do like a dash block like another character. If you think they're going to do something in a safe range, you kind of just use the K dandy to slide out the way and punish with pile bunker. Finally, the vacuum on 2S is an easy way to set up a strike throw into universe. Keep in mind though that on faultless defense, it may not reach. So paying attention to how your opponent is defending your strings is extremely important. When you don't swing into this though, you can still get the grab. Once you start getting comfortable with him, you can try to implement slightly more advanced things. So right now it is still pretty early. So even though I've seen a ton of combos and loops with Pile Bunker, there's only a couple I've seen that have been relatively easy and auto-timed, AKA safe for me, AKA safe for tournaments, AKA safe for online, such as the one from the beginning of this video. If you missed it, so using the 2S vacuum to pull them out the corner, you go into 2H into the P Dandy P Pile Bunker, which takes them out of the corner. And then you do close slash into P Dandy step again and Pile Bunker again. If you do this right, then you should actually hit with the back of the move. People are already calling this the back shot, by the way. Then follow up again with close slash 2S 2H P Pile Bunker again, and then you'll get the auto stick that you want. This is probably the main time I've seen a reliable three pile bunkers in one combo. From at least messing around with myself, I feel like two is pretty reliable. It's really, really finicky at the moment, but hopefully people will find more auto-timed ways to do it. Another much less simple thing you could do is take advantage of his dash. So he does not have the ability to dash block. As you can see, I'm gonna try to block in the middle, I just get hit. However, he can dash jump, which means that you can cancel special moves into dash, into jump, and slide with attacks. You might be like, what does this look like and why is it important? But for example, if I do close slash into grab, it's not going to work. But if I do close slash into the dash grab, I am able to slide at geo and get a grab. The input is not easy. I definitely recommend trying 
and getting down all the other stuff in this video before trying this. But no matter what special move you do, you do the input, then press dash, then press up forward, nine, and the button. So in the case of grab, instead of half circle back grab, right? Half circle back H, you do half circle back H, dash, and then nine or up forward. So if you're wondering, can I apply this to Mappa so you can go further? Yeah, so this is what we were talking about earlier in the video. So in a spot where K Mappa would whiff, you can reach using the dash acceleration to get even further and be more advantageous. But all right, that's pretty much Slayer basics. I wanted to try something a little bit different. Normally I go through all their moves and talk about what everything does, but I just want to talk about stuff that uh, you can just immediately use with him. Uh, I played him a good amount today, probably close to around 100 games or so with him. I will say, for example, I did not use the 100 meter super a single time the entire day, uh, nor was I doing many of the big pile bunker combos besides the one specific one I learned for the corner for this video. I do think he's going to be pretty scary once people actually get his stuff down, but this should be enough to just get you in games and playing the character. I would say he's more in line with Elfelt in having like a lower bar to entry of actually doing stuff. The only real difficulty being he's not very mobile so you can't like run around, you kind of have to like position yourself. If you played slower characters in this game or slower fighting games it should be no problem but if you're used to playing fast characters then it's, it's going to definitely be kind of weird. But yeah as usual if you have any questions or comments definitely feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Like and subscribe if you guys feel like it. Again, like in the last video, I do have a Medify open, so if you want any coaching, you can go over there. That's medify.gg slash at Lord Knight, I believe. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.